All right. Um, welcome, everybody, to our today's presentation of uh, the Billfinger Academy. So, first of all, a few words about who we are, um, because uh, for this project, we were not only uh, one con contracting company. Come in, but close the door afterwards, please. <laughs> So we were not only one contracting uh, company here, but uh, actually three. So that was, first of all, Lingna New Media, who did the specification, all the layout stuff, and the customer communication. Um, so there is uh, Moritz Spindler among us today, who did the project management. And um, then uh, there is uh, Intercode, that's uh, the two of us. Uh, Irene Höpner, who is uh, our lead architect, and myself, Andreas Fieser, I'm project manager at Intercode. And um, we did all the uh, Type 3 related stuff, so the, the savvy technical, technical stuff. And um, the third uh, party in here was uh, TTS, who did um, provide us with the, or who, who was the answering part for all the web services that we wrote. Right. Um, but who was our customer? Our customer was Billfinger SE. That's a uh, global uh, service and engineering uh, company. You might have uh, seen some of those Billfinger signs around on uh, construction sites. They're doing a lot more of that. So they pretty much do everything that is, has to do with uh, engineering. And uh, in 2012, 12, they had... Uh, 8.6 billion euro turnover, and so they have uh, 67,000 uh, employees to do that. So a little bit more than just construction. Um, and all those 67,000 employees had uh, a whole bunch of different training tools before uh, the Billfinger Academy was ready. So, um, oh, that's an empty one. Right. Um, the project actually um, consisted not only of the academy, but um, also of uh, relaunching the internet site, um, which is quite a fairly big thing because it was one main tree and as many as 96 uh, sub-trees for all the uh, Billfinger sub-companies. And um, so for all those sub-companies, we also implemented an intranet. And uh, only the third step was the academy, um, which, uh, yeah. All right? Um, so to introduce the Academy a little bit more, um, Lingner Consulting has actually created a short movie of two and a half minutes, which uh, just sums the whole thing up better than I could ever do. Bilfinger Academy, the training and educational platform of Bilfinger SE. The Bilfinger Academy has a high strategic relevance to the group. Bilfinger offers high quality engineering services. Therefore, the Bilfinger Academy offers high quality training and development opportunities. Starting from the homepage, the user quickly and easily gets to the requested content. Either way, via layer navigation or via the different modules. A great variety of seminars and programs supports our employees. The Bilfing Academy has three columns. The Learning Campus is one of the most important ones. The Learning Campus comprises training measures and provides information on development opportunities. With the help of the Seminar Finder, users can find the requested presence or e-learning seminar. Relevant seminar information, like topics, dates or availability, can be found on the details page. Related seminars are offered in the left column. The Leadership Forum combines all management offerings for systematic leadership development. Excellence Networks stand for professional and functional networking. My Academy offers personalized seminar information for each user. 
The Bilfing Academy provides high quality qualification, long term development programs, and good networking opportunities. Therefore, it's important for us at Bilfinger, from the employee level up to top management. A special feature of Bilfinger Academy is the connection of SAP to Title III. All the seminar contents are automatically transferred by web services to the content management system. Moreover, responsive design makes an ideal display of those contents on all devices possible. What uh, Mr. Baumgart, having been uh, uh, shown in this video, just said were the uh, goals that um, Bilfinger was actually um, going to achieve with this, um, with this project. And so um, just remember they had several different unconnected um, uh, training solutions and, and, and training platforms before that. And so um, they were looking to get a, a high quality qualification enabled throughout the whole group and um, to support a long-term development as well. So not just a person doing that training and maybe being able to do a different training somewhere, somewhere else, but nobody ever know, knows what he's done. And um, to also get some network opportunities going within the whole group. But what does this mean from a technical point of view? So um, first of all, um, yeah, we had to get all that training content there was into the um, look and feel of uh, Bilfinger. And um, so, uh, yeah, we just added the, the design that was uh, applied to the um, internet site and the intranet site to the academy as well. And um, so the whole thing splits up into, the academy splits up into three, oh, it's going forward. into three parts. That's the excellent networks and the leadership forum, which are actually mainly, uh, or yeah, quite regular, uh, so to speak, type of three content. And then we have the learning campus, which um, uh, is actually implemented to show all the content that is uh, supported or supplied by the SAP LSO platform that has been there to um, administer and to just provide all the information. And so uh, both of those systems actually brought in, Type, type of 3 brought in its, its strength in terms of, um, of uh, uh, display and, and layout, and SAP brought in its strength in terms of uh, yeah, data management and stuff. But obviously there are also quite a few challenges, challenges, cha sorry, challenges in this project. Um, so um, the first of them is that uh, we had quite a little uh, amount of data um, as there were uh, at first three different types of, of trainings. The first were uh, web-based trainings, which were um, flash, basically flash, interactive flash presentations that uh, can be launched directly out of the platform and just um, run through. And so once they are accomplished, you have this on your, in your history and you've just done it. Um, the second are um, classroom seminars, so those are uh, seminars taking place face-to-face -face, uh, uh, at a fixed time in a fixed uh, place. And the third is the combination of uh, the two so-called so so curriculums. So uh, in addition to these, we had a lot of um, cross-seminar and metadata like uh, a date, location, the presenter and so on and so forth. And, um, just not to get it boring, we did it in German and English. So um, altogether, all those seminars were grouped into 400 different seminar groups to be able to depict the seminars taking place for 67,000 employees. And um, so those groups um, were, had to be structured in a, in a quite complicated way that was just given. So we decided to do this um, uh, in a way that we can inherit levels, so we have an inf infinite number of levels to structure these, um, these uh, trainings. So this, can, this goes on and on for technically as long as you want. And um, just to yeah, be able to reflect that, that structure. 
uh, what we see here is um, a single view of um, such, a, such a seminar. So we have everything on here um, supplied by SAP. This is uh, kind of regular content, so the description, the, the title, and the target groups, and so on and so forth. And uh, on the right-hand side, we have data, um, which is uh, the, the actual status of the seminar. So is it, <coughs> are there still places vacant, um, in which location, at which time? And this is actually fetched um, real time. So uh, yeah, that was another challenge of uh, this project. So um, yeah, there's always the question, is infrastructure a challenge or a solution? <laughs> Just uh, build your own opi opinion when we showed you. So um, the first thing we had were um, two internet servers connected by a load balancer and using static file cache and an intranet server separately to just manage all the load. And um, to um, develop the whole thing, we had a dev, a dev server, an integration server uh, for the technical implementation and the staging server for um, the editors. So another um, thing that made the whole project a little tricky was that for security reasons, those live servers do not have a backend. So everything the editors or we do has to get over here by uh, a publishing tool. And um, of course we had uh, yeah, quite a few type of three instances running on here. So two on every development server and on the live side, um, the corresponding um, type of three. Right, that was the uh, part of the technical challenge. As I mentioned, we were three um, contractors, but uh, the project was not only complicated on the contractor side, but also on the customer side. There was Billfinger SE as our main uh, uh, customer, but also Bebit, which is the IT department of Billfinger, and H uh, HSEQ, which is the HR department. So these guys also had to communicate with, with each other, as did we, which, uh, as you can imagine, made quite a communicational mess when they had uh, a decision to be made or a bug to be found or just tracked down. Where does it come from? Is it from type of three? Is it the bug in SAP? Is it the network? Is it the server? Whatever. Uh, have I already mentioned that all time we had from the finished specification to a running um, Academy were actually two months, but uh, it worked out finally. So um, how did we accomplish all this? Um, the first thing we did was uh, we had the task of bringing that one design to all platforms, right? So that was the internet, the intranet, and the academy. Basically what we did is we implemented um, a type of three extension um, based on uh, Flow and uh, XBase to just bring out the layout to all three of them, and fluid, sorry. Um, <laughs> and um, by that, the big advantage was that whenever we implement a new feature for any of those, all of them can uh, profit from it uh, instantly. Right, um, and here is the infrastructure again, uh, now signposted with current infrastructure, which is when it gets a little more difficult, and so I hand over to Irene to take you on a journey to the technical implementation of the whole thing. Okay, so for the academy, um, there was the decision. Yeah. Hmm? No, yeah. Ah, the mouse must, lost contact. No, you must, you must with the mouse part drin sein. There we go. Ah, okay. <laughs> Let's see if it goes on. So we added some more type three instances because the decision was to have no type three instance for the academy, and it was neither an intranet nor an intranet, but an extranet, <laughs> extranet. And uh, besides all of those additional type of three instances, um, we also had uh, two SAP servers. Um, an SAP development system and the SAP production system. And as you see, the development system talks to our, our development system and the production system talks to all the other systems, or in fact, we talk to the SAP system. How did we accomplish this? Well, um, so, so web service, which is a standard 
often used. And um, in this project, SAP provided the web service, so SAP was the server and we, were, we are the client. And so um, SAP um, did the definition for the web services and we uh, consume them. them. We have four major web services, web service groups, so we have different web services for different tasks. Um, it's an import, so there is some data we import to Type 3 uh, and we uh, store in Type 3. Um, this is due to performance, so we don't have to ask SAP for every page out. Um, then we have some statuses, uh, this is what uh, Andy has shown before. Uh, we also implement some sync sign on. Some sync sign on. Um, so the users log in, log authenticate against SAP. And there is a part uh, which is called My Academy. Um, this is a personalized data, and the personalized data itself is stored in SAP as well. So we need some web services for that too. So let's start with the import. Um, the import uh, means that we import the training group data, we import the trainings, we import the uh, cross training data like um, locations and trainers and stuff like that. Um, this is done automatically uh, with a few web services. And um, uh, it's done once a day, but it's also possible to start that update manually whenever um, the users want to do that. So if the, uh, the HR department um, changed the route in SAP, then uh, they usually will start an update manually. The other big group of uh, web services is the status information. Um, this information is real-time information, so every time the, pa web, the page is loaded, like a uh, classroom date, then you get information about the availability of classroom dates. Um, and uh, for those information, the SAP server is being asked. As you might imagine, those asking the SAP server takes some time, so we implemented those information um, as IAX requests. Um, so the page is loaded fast, but the information comes in once the web service is done. The next group is the sync sign on. Um, this means that, of course, we authenticate against SAP, so there's no user management in Type 3. The user logs in, SAP is being asked, are those credentials okay? It says yes or no, and does the user log in or not? Um, besides that, we have some uh, forgot your password or reset your password feature implemented, um, so in the case we're talking to SAP as well. Uh, there's some specialty about the login. So depending on the location where the user um, calls this, the, the site, the page, he will either have to log in at once, this is if he accesses from the front desktop, then you have to log in, you don't see any content, so you can see the academy, um, at least you can see the login form of the academy from the public internet. Um, but when you come from inside the corporate network, then you can see all the content which is stored inside Type 3, so all the new project uh, updated content will be visible for you, but uh, for some actions for uh, to get the status, but also to get your personal information, you have to log in. You, have to, um, you, are, uh, you get a hint that you could log in to get some more information. So the fourth group is the personalization. Um, personalization means that uh, the user can add each seminar, each training to his favorites list. And then he has a list of all his favorites. And the idea is that now the user can export that to Excel. And that Excel file can be sent by mail to his boss. And that boss can say, yes, you can join this training or no, you can join that training. All those data even those favorites are stored in SAP. So we, we talk to SAP to add training to the favorites list of a certain user, and uh, SAP also gives us 
um, this is the favorite for the loved in user. Another part is uh, my academy. Here the user um, uh, can see all his training, his Finnish trainings, and uh, his web-based trainings, and the status of his web-based trainings. Um, there is still some special feature which you can see down here. So for web-based trainings, you can do some actions as a user. You can, you can uh, book it, and uh, in this case, you can book it because we, this user booked it already, so we can start it or we can cancel it. And um, on the business logic behind that, so because this is dependent on the user settings and dependent on the web-based training settings and things like that, on the business logic is, for, is, is against on the SAP. So we, we just say SAP, the user um, click that button, uh, then SAP does something and returns back the status, which means um, which buttons the user can click. So, all this uh, personal information is uh, real-time data as well, like the station information. So, of course, uh, we don't want to wait for this uh, SAP request, the sub-request. Uh, so, all this personal information is all uh, IF calls as well, IF requests, and that's why we implemented some generic IF interface for that. And this generic IF interface um, uses HTML. Valid, valid HTM5, it uses big data attributes, HTM5, and uh, this is um, in fact this is some free template and it's part and de depending on the um, parameters um, the IX score is done. Um, another uh, challenge was that um, we knew already that the um, possibility to add content in SAP is uh, limited. So, for example, there are real pictures possible. So we knew that um, there was a wish to add some more content to the trainings and uh, to, uh, to the trainers and whatever we imported. So the concept was from the beginning um, to integrate that into Title III as soon as possible. And uh, we achieved that uh, by um, using the page view. We have hierarchical training groups and what is in infinity, hi infinite hierarchical training groups, training groups. So, what is the place to show some hierarchy in type of tree? Of course, it's the page tree. <laughs> um, so, the training groups are on special page types. Um, the trainings are on special page types. So, in, in fact, these, these behind all the academy, there's a dot uh, a next based domain model. But some of the models, some of the classes, are mapped to the page tree, and uh, that means that an editor can easily find um, find the trains he, uh, he want to complement with more information. Um, he can also add some pages to expand the navigation with some overview pages. And um, besides that, the integration of this on the free navigation is very easy. This approach. Another nice uh, feature is the signal finder. Of course, users should find signals pretty easy. So um, they have the possibility to find them by search word. And um, they can reduce the search result with some um, um, properties of the seminars. Um, there's a big signal finder, and there's a small signal finder, and uh, the cool the cool technical thing here is that all this is based on solar. So we put all the seminar content to solar. Um, all those select boxes you see here are solar facets, and that makes the search pretty fast. And uh, it has also the advantage that in the search result of the main search, you find all the type of three content of all the three um, areas we saw on the beginning, but you also find the signal content, and you can um, fill, reduce your search result with the same facets like in the signal button. Testing, of course, we did some automated testing. <laughs> we also did a lot of manual testing, but um, we did some automated testing here. Um, 
the most interesting part uh, is the acceptance testing. Uh, we have a lot of JavaScript around, especially um, IX. We used uh, accept acceptance testing. This is a mink behave test, or behavior testing is also a uh, known, known version for that. Um, yeah, in, in fact, so at some point this really needs to, to do that. But it's a, a way to um, test the JavaScript stuff. This was a challenge as well because we, um, for testing, we depended on the SAP data. Um, it, it, we could have faked that, but that would be the full test. So the first step for this uh, uh, testing was um, to get some testing data that is complete and um, structured. And uh, that was uh, put into the, put into the uh, SAP development system, and this is where we use, what we use for testing. And we also have some unit tests. We don't have function tests, because they come at 26 or 2. And this is, then um, uh, during the development, and uh, now we implemented some logging, so every import we do uh, logs the important steps into a file log, so um, if an error occurs, if you, if you import uh, 420 groups and one phase because of some validation errors or some other errors on, on the web service side which we had, <laughs> especially in the beginning, then we uh, definitely wanted to know what happened. So, yeah, well. The last word is for Andy. <laughs> it's uh, just about what have we learned of all this um, project. Um, the first thing we learned is uh, type of three works, obviously. Um, or we proved that. The second thing is uh, we proved it to work um, together with um, SAP uh, via SOAP web services. So that was, um, yeah, just working perfectly fine. But the point is, the more interfaces you have on a technical side, the more communication and the more crucial communication becomes on the human side. So be prepared for that. Um, if, there, if there are a lot of stakeholders in that project, it's just going to get complicated no matter what you try. Right, um, that's it. Thank you from our side for listening. And um, if you have any questions, um, unfortunately, I'm afraid we're not going to have another beer tonight. So this is the time to ask questions. Yes, please. If you uh, implement something like back uh, synchronization of content change in some category, back to SAP system? It wasn't necessary because um, the content that comes from SAP can only be edited in SAP. Yes, yeah. there's no way to change that. It can just be com complemented by the system. Okay. Any more questions? <laughs> then, uh, yeah. If not, we'll. If, <laughs> if not, we'll be around for at least another while. So, uh, for now, thank you for listening.